What is going on, you wonderful people? I hope you're having an amazing day. Before we get into the video, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps. Now, with that being said, today we have Judge Joe Brown talking about Donald Trump. If Donald Trump is racially discriminatory towards the other groups of people, you know the word I'm trying to use, but I can't use it. With that being said, let's just get right into the video. What What is your take on Trump? Is Trump a racist? I don't think so. I have talked to a number of black entrepreneurs who back in the late 80s and 90s, were early 90s, were trying to get financing. They couldn't. Somebody told them to go check with Donald Trump. So they come back and tell me they got a loan from Donald Trump. He gave them a term loan. Show up with the interest in the principal, one check. But they had to go see him personally. They independently relate this tale that when they saw him, he said, this is what you're supposed to pay me? This our agreement? I said, yeah. And then tore the check up, shook their hands, and congratulations. Now run your business. Mm. And this was when? This was back in the 90s. See, <laughs> most people don't even know this. He had a sister. He was. Wow. Wow, this is back in the 90s. So he told people of color, say, hey, I'm going to give you this loan. And if you have this loan, you know, work off, work it off, pay it off. Give me the money back in this set amount of time. They came back with the money, which, you know, is amazing at that. You know, congratulations to them because they actually did, did the right work. They did the hard work to get what they needed to get done. And they came back to Donald Trump. But Donald Trump said, no, 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 I don't need the money. Keep the money. I'm just happy to help, basically. At least that's what I'm hearing from Judge Joe Brown right now. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. Every time you saw him back in the night, it's fine paper bag, brown, beautiful black model. He likes fine women. He didn't have any problem with dating a black woman, walking her down red carpets. So, I mean, she says he's not a racist. He just doesn't like many people, black or white. And <laughs> he appreciates people who do stuff within their lane. Uh, well, not stay in their lane, but where they choose to be, if they do it well, he admires them. Black, white, brown, red, yellow. Most people don't know this. He did was the finance man behind Jesse Jackson's two runs for president. Hmm. Wow. So, you know, he talks, but I don't mind somebody talking. I think we've gotten too sensitive to that. That's part of the effeminization of the country. I remember in junior high and high school, hey, man, I won't say nothing, man, but last night when I saw your mama, man, you don't know I was over there because you were asleep, man, but blah, 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 blah. We ran the dozens. That was our sport. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we were used to talking about each other. Now, man, he talked about my mama, man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? That's true. That is very true. Today, people are overly sensitive. And, you know, they can't take a joke. It's the reason why comedy is, you know, slowly dying down. But it's never going to fully die because it's always going to be real comedians out there like Dave Chappelle. Uh, I know Andrew Schultz is one of them. All of those people, shout out to them. But I want to touch on something else that he just said. He said that Donald Trump doesn't like many people, but he just likes people that are good at what they do regardless of color. That is amazing right there. To me, that kind of reminds me of what Martin Luther King said. I wish there was a day, you know, when my kids will be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. The content of their, I guess you couldn't say, what's the right word to use? Merit. Yeah, their merit. Yeah, they're judged on their merit and not their skin color. That's basically what he's saying Donald Trump does. He judges people on their merit and how useful they are at what they do. How useful are these people to society at the end? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. do, do you think uh, Trump will get reelected? I think he's going to get reelected. Uh, this impeachment mess we've got right now. There's a thing called the U.S. Constitution, and the Constitution says the president is the chief diplomatic officer of the United States. It puts no limits on his discretion. It simply says that if he comes up with any treaties, they have to be ratified by the Senate. If a treaty is ratified by the Senate, it becomes part of the supreme law of the land. The president and other elected and appointed officials are under oath required to follow the law of the land. The State Department, Secretary of State are part of his cabinet and are essentially advisors to the president. He's mm -hmm. the boss. So what he does relative to Biden is simply what is allowed and mandated by the 
Constitution, specifically Article I, Section 8, that says the president is charged with, quote, enforcing the law of nations. Mm. We have an Interpol treaty with various European states and also one specifically with the Ukraine that requires that we basically investigate, apprehend, prosecute, extradite criminal elements and criminality. Mm -hmm. So Biden out of his own mouth, and I've heard this tape twice, uh, January this year, he says, well, 2019, he says, I guess I broke some laws, <laughs> extortion. I told the Ura uh, Ukrainians if they didn't get rid of this uh, the prosecutor prosecutor's there. name yeah, is the Skola, anti Skola, the anti -corruption I think. Prosecutor yeah, he Ukraine said, if you don't get rid wow. of him, we'd withhold $85 billion in loan guarantees. So his son, who had just been discharged for the military for being a junkie, uh, had a drug problem, had no history in business. He affiliates with this, and at the time, Biden was in charge of the U.S.'s Ukrainian posture and relations. Uh, Obama had assigned him that. And by implication, he brought Obama into committing a crime in office, which is a felony. It's extortion. Wow. He committed one extortion by his own mouth, uh, threatening to withhold 85, million in, 85 billion in loan guarantees if they didn't get rid of this prosecutor who was zeroing in on that corporation that his son wow. had just been hired to represent after Biden Sr. had uh, been assigned by the president the task of dealing with Ukrainian diplomacy. That is insane right there. He's exposing, he's exposing Biden right now. That is exactly what he's doing. He said, hey, Biden literally said he threatened he threatened the Ukrainian people with uh with with withholding US foreign aid if they did not, you know, get rid of this prosecutor or whatever the heck you just said that was looking into his son's dealings. That was looking into his son's wrongdoings, because you know his son is a very cuckoo person. We all know that they just found those substances at the White House, who knows who those are. We all know that they that they have videos, dozens of videos at this point, of Hunter Biden doing illegal substances and we're not gonna say what those are but we already know what those are so this is insane to me he is literally exposing biden up in this video i did not expect this right now i'm not gonna lie to you guys i thought he was gonna be talking about trump and that was it you know if trump was you know a racist and all of that stuff but apparently he's talking about biden too up in this i didn't know that he was into all of this stuff wow that's insane judge joe brown always surprising so Son gets $18.5 million out of it, and he has no background other than a dishonorable discharge from the armed services for drug abuse. Mm. But one last question. Do you think black people are missing an opportunity with Trump? Yo, yeah. See, you've got somebody that is not a lifetime Republican. He's been a blue dog Democrat for most of his life. He usurped the Republican Party. So... I think this thing I've been tweeting about, no benefit, no vote, ought to be the deal. We haven't gotten a damn thing out of the Democratic Party for a long time. And the last one, number 44 and the one before that, 43, Bush and Obama, well, there are pictures of Bush with his arm around uh, eight-year-old Barack Obama because his stepdaddy, adopted daddy, Lolo Sotoro, had done a lifetime worth of business with the Bushes. Uh, wow. wow. Uncle George Herbert Walker, after whom George Herbert Walker Bush, Bush one president, was named, founded Halliburton in 1946 in Oklahoma. And Lolo Sotoro had been international executive vice president for Standard Oil. There, there was talk of him being a CIA actor. Hold on, hold on. Before you ask the question, what are we going to do? That's crazy. The fact that he knows all of this information about the presidents and you know the the government at hand and the officials at hand that's just simply amazing he just con he just connected obama to bush before obama was even a thing before obama was even in in any type of political sphere and that also tells you that nepotism is an actual thing in the black community i know a lot of people don't want to say that if you even consider barack obama black because i think you know he's biracial really which is completely different than black but what i'm saying is nepotism does exist you know, Barack Obama, 
got into office, you know, because he was a very good speaker. You know, he was very coherent. He was very smart in many ways, but he was still terrible with policy. He was still terrible with a lot of things. So right now, what Judge Joe Brown is doing, like, is, doing is he's, he's exposing a lot of the hypocrisy, a lot of the missed things that we, like, we the people see. He's exposing a lot of that stuff right now. That's crazy. I did not know any of that stuff about Barack Obama's family. Did not know any of that stuff about Barack Obama in general, if I'm being honest right there. That was insane. Kudos to him. Oh, well, yeah, Indonesia. see, he ran mm -hmm. the death squads for the Indonesian army. On mm -hmm. his own call, anyone could be assassinated. So when George Herbert Walker Bush became head of the CIA under the Ford administration, he just got with his old buddy in the oil business, Lolo Sotoro, and pulled off the hits. See, uh, Barack's grandmother has been acknowledged as being the woman that operated the channels through which CIA money went to the Southwest Pacific. So she introduced her daughter, who had just had Barry, Barack, to Lolo Sotoro, and they got married, and Lolo Sotoro adopted Barack Obama. The name was changed to Barry Sotoro. Mm -hmm. Now, when he went to high school in Hawaii, I know about that high school I almost sent my oldest son to it I could afford it but I didn't think he observed deserved it 20 years ago the tuition was $95,000 a year not including wow. room and board when Obama went there I've talked to two of his classmates they independently state that the tuition not including room and board was 45000 now, Business Insider reports his income for 2017 at over $200 million net. That's after taxes, deductions, write-offs. Mm -hmm. For this last year, 20... Obama's income was over $200 million net? That is insane. I'm going to keep going. No, my bad, pausing it, but that was just insane right there. I just had to pause it for that. What? 18, they reported it as $570-plus million dollars. And that's after all deductions, tax right? Trump doesn't make that net. Net? I mean, he made 370 million net profit. Barack Obama is that what he's saying right now? Is he still talking about Barack Obama right here? The Barack Obama family and like you know, his family and all that stuff is what? What is he doing? Wait, that's actually insane. I, did, I had no idea that that was the case. I really had no idea that, that was the case. Oof. Even some of the richest people in America don't make that. Why? Because when his stepdaddy died, he was one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. And he left everything in a trust fund, operated out of Indonesia, oh. so the American government can't touch it, that makes Barack Obama one-third beneficiary for the assets of one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. Wow. See, so we got a game run on us. So the information this man has in his mind is amazing. This is simply amazing. So you mean to tell me that Barack Obama's stepdad had all of his money and Barack Obama inherited this money. And not only did he inherit this money, he's still making business dealings with this money. I'm assuming he's still making money off of the money. I'm assuming and it's up in Indonesia, which is away from the American government, even though Barack Obama was a sitting president at the time that this happened. So how is that even the case? How is that even possible? Did you know that that was legal for a U.S. sitting president to like, he could be inherited money outside of the U S you know, from, other banks and all of this stuff over in Indonesia and all that. What? This is insane. Oh man, Judge Joe Brown is actually really educated on this stuff. It's amazing. So, you know that little thing that Bush W does when he gets with Michelle, they giggle and he gives a candy. The inside thing is that supposed to be the same kind of candy he used to give to her husband when he was six, seven, eight years old. Oh wow. That was a pretty good video right there. That was an amazing video by uh i don't even know this channel's name but just it was just an amazing video uh with judge joe brown up in it if you enjoyed this video guys if you enjoyed it like and subscribe my name is jay Dottie. peace